Welcome back to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Morning Joe's Joe Scarborough joined Real Time with Bill Maher along with billionaire Mark Cuban to lament being accused of Trump derangement syndrome. That's a term used by some to describe how everything former President Donald Trump does and says gets exaggerated in a negative way. Let's watch. This past week, Donald, uh, Donald Trump said that he was going to use the military and yeah. the National Guard to arrest his political opponents. He was asked if he would back off of that. He said no. And he said no. Yep. In fact, he doubled down. He talked about Nancy Pelosi being evil, her husband being evil, Schiff being evil, talking about arresting them. He said he was going to execute the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff because he was disloyal to him. He told another chief of staff who was a general, I wish my generals were like Hitler's generals. It's the new season of The Sopranos. And, and, it's and, crazy. I mean, yeah. it really is. I mean, but, 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 and, but people, and, you know, you tell people this and they go, oh, he didn't say that. You show them the clip and then they go. He doesn't, he doesn't mean, mean that. He, does, he that, that's a, does mean that. And that's that. when they say you have Trump derangement syndrome. Right. And I would just like to say to my Republican friends, it's not deranged to fear this. Well, they kind of proved the point because he did exaggerate or misstate pretty much every one of those complaints that he had about Trump. Although what is even better about that clip is Mark Cuban sitting there looking like a little baby <laughs> next to Joe Scarborough. I just love that framing. Scar Joe is uh, is very tall. Uh, look, I, so I listened to what Trump said about sending military to arrest people and I do think it was bad what he said. I, the disconnect for people though, if they're not believing that Trump is some authoritarian threat to America is that Trump's already been president and nothing like that occurred. Uh, Trump says crazy things, some of which I agree are very, very, very bad. It's all rhetoric. The way he governed was just not that far outside, for better or for worse, frankly, the way a normal Republican president would uh, would govern. He, he did not, uh, you know, and this is my frustration with him, is that he did not clear house in the State Department or the Defense Department or yeah. did, he did not you know, wrangle or, or eliminate or take or, or reduce the what he calls the deep state, which he now says is is uh, out to get him. Well, you, you know, you could have fired, you could have shut down departments, you could have fired people, you could have done all that, uh, but you didn't, and now uh, here we are. But really, that that's an indictment of Trump that it was not so norm shattering in terms of how the the government uh, was was run. It was business as usual. That's totally separate from the things he says, which I wish many of them he would not say because they are crazy and they don't help him, but that's just who he is. I do wish his first term had been a little bit more radical. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I, I, I find it hard to get too worked up over the enemy within common or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, my initial read on it was he's talking about the fact that there were all of these riots. Like, he's mm -hmm. talking about radical left, that's Antifa. He was using radical right? left synonymous like, with sort of unrest kind of Yeah, criminal. I mean, I, I thought it was like inartful maybe, but not some yeah. sign that he wants to round up Nancy Pelosi, especially yeah. when you consider, um, you know, as many of us were on the ground in DC during the inauguration of Trump, there was a significant attempt to burn down the city because of the results of a Democratic election. Um, I watched someone pull a stop sign out of a ground and swing it at a police officer Yeah, yeah in, in January 2017. Um, there were people smashing windows of Starbucks. I mean, it was genuine chaos in the nation's capital. Political violence so belongs like, to no faction and no party. Well, it, Everybody can get really butthurt and smash some stuff. We've definitely seen that. Well, sure, but it's, I mean, like, yeah, yeah send the National Guard in. I have no problem with that. And I think that's what he was talking about. Yeah, I, I think uh, I, I think American voters, American citizens, yes, want don't like riot. I mean, people in their communities don't like rioting. It's, it's, Correct. You know, when there's rioting on behalf of uh, police injustice or violence, oftentimes in cases where I think it's very sympathetic or where the police behave wrongly, but op you know, oppressed people or low-income people in those communities, they don't want their cities burned to the ground. They don't want their supermarkets or their local convenience stores. They don't want all the windows broken. They don't want any of that going on. That's bad for their community. They hate it. So the, the you know, elite woke people who pretend to speak on their behalf and say, no, this, this violence is necessary to, to, to work out or to call attention to injustice. That's not how the people there actually feel yeah. about it. And I know like a lot of people get, don't like the rhetoric because it's very, intense and charged yeah. but like i also feel like I've, if someone is uh rioting and they kill a 
St. Louis police captain who's trying to protect a small business, like, I have no problem saying that person's my enemy. Yeah. But he said, I mean, you know, he says sending in, in a lot of these cases, I don't think involving vast federal forces is necessarily going to be the right approach. And, you know, when he specifically talks about then Pelosi or that kind of thing, I would rather uh, he, he not do it. And this election is going to be as close as it could conceivably be. And I, I think it is a drawback for Trump that he, you know, while his fans don't care about this stuff at all, they're all on board, there is some sliver, persuadable slice of the electorate. It's not a lot of people, but it's the people who are gonna decide this election who prefer Trump or Republican policies on a lot of things, but just can't get past a distaste for these things he says. So I don't know why he says them, because it doesn't win the most. It, 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 enthuses the people who are already voting for him, who will crawl over broken glass to vote for him. Well, and also dis a lot of disaffected voters are people who are new registrants. Yeah. So basically the campaign has to make a calculation of, yeah. are those people enough to outweigh the never Trump contingent, which we don't even really know how big it is, frankly. We don't yeah. really know how many people make that up. And as Kamala is losing some important parts of the Democratic base, I don't think they're going to be as consequential as the Kamala yeah. campaign clearly thinks they are by putting Liz Cheney out on the campaign trail. Yeah, I, I don't think Liz Cheney is really speaking to those people either. But, you know, we'll see. Trump, Republicans doing better with some men, men minority voters, categories of the electorate. Democrats, Harris doing better with certain more affluent people in the suburbs. You see more. Harris wall signs in in uh, in suburban uh, you know wealthier white suburban enclaves that would have been Republican supporters and it's just a matter of how much you lose yeah, there versus how much you gain. You're reshuffling the deck basically. We're reshuffling and we are gonna find out soon. I'll be glad to have this election over. I don't know about you. I'm gonna sleep for. 10 weeks. 10 weeks. <laughs> that sounds about right to me. Okay. Thank you for watching today. We'll have more free media next week. Please like, share, and subscribe, and keep watching. Thanks.